All right, let's stay with this particular story. Now we've got uh, um, Mzondi Lembeje, who is a CBC News political editor, who is in conversation with us. In fact, we'll also try to see if it's able to get, uh, it's possible to get Dale McKinley as well to join us on this particular conversation. But let me start with you, Mzwai. Yeah. Um, you were there in the room uh, when the former president was, okay, the statement was read by his daughter. Yes. Firstly, let's just start with the room, the mood of how everything was unfolding as you were there just witnessing yeah. the people who were also in attendance. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Bongi. Uh, of course, in the room, uh, there were some of his supporters uh, who had been brought in, obviously, I guess, to get support. But uh, essentially, where we were, <coughs> it was a press briefing where he was communicating to the nation uh, his decision <coughs> around uh, the politics of the country. So obviously those who came to support him, so they're very, jo very jovial and every time uh, he would say something they agreed with, so they would obviously clap, so which is quite understandable. Now, this particular statement of deciding not to campaign and to vote for, for, for the ANC, a lot of people in the lead up to this were speculating yeah. that he may be leaving the party. Mm -hmm. But again, you were spot on in, yeah. in some of your predictions about what we could be seeing today. What are we reading into this? <coughs> you know, um, I, 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 as I was sitting, uh, listening to the statement, and then after the statement, uh, listening to him, I saw someone crying for help. Um, you know, we have been here before, and that he has been the leader of the ANC before and the country. Things similar to what he is doing have happened under his watch. And then he's been very well, he was very critical of them. I mean, the fact that uh, he is not leaving the ANC, but what he is doing is a direct challenge to the ANC lends itself to, I think it's Rule 25, um, I stand correction uh, on the actual um, uh, sections of the rule, which basically says of the ANC, so if you do things uh, similar to what he is doing, so you uh, actually expelling yourself, um, because he is actually daring the ANC um, to say, this is what I've decided to do, um, what, can you do what, what can you do? Because if you look at the parallels that he's drawing in terms of the MK, uh, uh, um, and the ANC then, and the conditions were totally different. Right now you have a party that is contesting state power. And then as a member of the ANC in good standing, you are helping those uh, who want it out to get out. And then what you are saying is you are actually rescuing it. Um, a bit of contradiction, I guess, but I guess... Um, in the coming days we'll be able to actually understand mm. what, what what is this um and that's why i say i said when we started bongi i see a man crying for help perhaps mm. uh, the leadership of the anc may have done more to engage with this particular court of leaders who feel um they have been left behind i mean he even mentioned in his statement, uh, former President Big, you mm. remember that statement mm. that President Big had made to say under the current circumstances he can't uh, with honesty go and campaign for the ANC. So that is quite interesting. But as I'm saying, this will unfold in the coming days. Uh, it will become clearer. But yeah, quite interesting how the ANC is going to, res to respond to this. Definitely. And it's interesting because um, he's not the only one. And they continue to raise this issue of communication. Mm. And they say the channels were open in the past, even the dissenting mm. voices. And I'm going to come back to that in just a moment. But Mzai, let me bring uh, to our conversation mm. a political analyst, Dr. Dale McKinley. Thank you so much for your time. Is this, in your view, a dare to the ANC? No, I, I think it would be a dare if there was a real possibility that uh, ex-President Zuma presented a, a real political competition to the ANC, but he doesn't. Um, he's announcing the formation, evidently, of a political party five months before an election, uh, which has no infrastructure, which has no campaigning, which has no program that is yet to be uh, unveiled. And as anyone who enters in the political realm knows, it's a difficult task uh, to run a political campaign. He could get some support um, just because of his endorsement, but he's hedged his bets. He's basically not resigned from the ANC. He's saying, I'm going to be a member from the ANC, but I'm not going to campaign. So he's basically wanting both sides so of that. And I don't know how well that's going to go down, even with those who might have supported him previously. 
Um, it does appear, I, I, would, I would agree, that I think that the way in which this uh, press conference happened, it appears as though there's a real desperation uh, to try to, to grab onto something in order to save certain, not just uh, ex-President Zuma's uh, political career, but I think many, many others. And um, it seems to me a bit of a desperate move. Uh, they could get some support, but I seriously doubt whether there'll be a real uh, competition to the ANC. He says, uh, you know, that, that for him this is a bold move to try and rescue the, the, the ANC, as he says. But how the ANC then responds to this particular move is going to be quite critical. And one wonders then if, uh, you know, you think that they may move to expel him. How do you think it unfolds? Well, that is a possibility. I mean, uh, but they, they, they would have had to then, if they're going to do that, they would obviously have to look at, at ex-president Thabo Mbeki because he's basically said more or less similar kinds of things as you mentioned. I doubt it. I don't think it would be politically smart to expel him. I think it would cause more trouble than, than it's worth. I think basically see how that see how this plays out, but, ba but point out the contradictions. I mean, if one listened to the statement and the press conference, it's as though the last 30 years was only 20 years. In other words, 2007 to 2017 didn't exist that it actually Zuma spoke nothing about his own presidency, about his own achievements, supposedly, or all the problems that happened within his own uh, administration. So it's, it's in some ways, I think many people will look at this. There'll be these diehard supporters, but I think many people will look at it and appear as though he's being very selective about his attempt to try to understand what's happened in this country. There are serious problems, no doubt about that. There's much to criticize about the ANC, but there's a sense that if you're going to claim that you're a member of the ANC for life and you're abandoning it when it's in its most need, that doesn't play really well to loyalists. And it's going to be very interesting, Mzoi, the significance of announcing this today, the 62nd yeah. anniversary of Mkondo Sizwe as well. In fact, I think there are two uh, issues I picked up around uh, today. Um, you know, 1961, uh, when Mkondo was formed uh, today, and then the choice of the venue, and I think in 1959, that's where the PAC was formed. And then the, 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 the emphasis on black unity as well, on, on, on black people coming together. So I also looked at that and saying, okay, uh, this is the possibility perhaps that they are following. And also, when you uh, listened, in fact, I had, I had a giggle as well. You know, <coughs> there used to be this uh, phrase of clever blacks and, uh, and, and, and former President Zuma. And then you hear the statement championing their cause. And then you are like, wow, this is quite interesting. Politics Especially is when he says that they've declared <laughs> war yes. against progressive blacks. Yes. So I was like, that takes me back yeah. to clever blacks, though, doesn't exactly. it? Exactly. That's why I'm, I'm, I was... Okay, this is very interesting, but I mean, politics is quite a complex game. So you can't just go and then think uh, you'll understand. So you have to be in it, you have to play it, you have to learn it to understand it. So clearly, um, as, as, uh, as uh, I think uh, uh, our colleague as well has, has indicated as well, <coughs> for me, I think the former president uh, is saying, for, for forget about what has been decided upon, is saying, my comrades, I need you more. So don't you see? Come, let's talk. Hmm. And I'm coming back to that in just a moment. But there's something else, uh, Dr. McKinley, that he said, um, you know, and a number of people are saying that because he still has, uh, and you were talking about it, his support base, the people then who would back his call. Do you think that this may have some kind of an impact, if at all, in the province of Guazul Natal, for example? Certainly. Uh, as, as you mentioned, I mean, ex-President Zuma does, does have a support base there. He still has influence. I was asked yesterday about the possibilities of him leaving the ANC, and I, I, I said that, in fact, he still wields quite a bit of influence, irrespective of all of his problems. And uh, I think that's why this smacks of a bit of desperation, because if you're looking at the longer term, if you're looking at, at uh, really rescuing the ANC, in his words, uh, then you would basically stay within it and work within it as he has done for such a long time. But having said that, yes, in KwaZulu-Natal, it could tip the favor in, in favor of a coalition, for example, of the DA and IFP, 
uh, if the ANC loses the vote and this new MK party takes a, a substantial uh, a section of what used to be the ANC vote. I don't know if it's going to have much of an impact nationally, but it could certainly in localities where there is a, a deal, a great deal of Zuma support. It could make a difference between whether the ANC gets a majority or whether it's a minority and has to enter into coalitions with other parties. It's interesting, Mzawi, we're out of time, but I have to ask you this. It's interesting that it's happening at a time when we're thinking back to the many years ago when yeah. there was an issue with Congress of the People mm -hmm. and that matter being taken to court mm -hmm. of how they were using the name, but the courts then ruled otherwise. And now here, um, we heard just a few days ago, the Secretary General mm -hmm. of the ANC talking about this very organization saying Umkonto Wessis belongs, as a name that belongs to the ANC, and yet here's former President Jacob Zuma. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, the Secretary General of the ANC made it clear they're going to contest this. But I think before they can ev they even decide to contest this, I can tell you they'll make an effort of trying to reach out to see if they can find some sort of an amicable, amicable way to resolve this. So you're thinking it's... Okay, I, I don't know, <laughs> but let's see what happens. They, they, may not, they may not necessarily be able to agree but I can tell you now, the ANC will not sit back. They have noted this decision. And for me, that noting is, we'll go and check with our comrades. If obviously all that fails, they will go to court because Umkondo Sizwe has always been associated with the ANC. Sure. Uh, Dr. McKinley and um, Zondila, thank you so much for helping us make sense initially, mm -hmm. um, you know, just after what we heard. And there's a lot to unpack. You think about so many of the things that he said, but I'm sure as you say, Zondila, we're going to be needing a few days just to get a sense of what exactly happened here. That's Zondila Mbeche, our political editor here at the SABC, as well as Dr. Dale McKinley, a political analyst.